Welcome back from that short break. We continue with the news on New Vision TV. We now look at what is making headlines in business with Lynn Komjishe. <laughs> and this is in business. My name is Lynn Komjishe. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you. Paul, the 19, uh, before we can look at the 1988-1989, how did the previous financial year perform? Well, this was an interesting uh, budget, I think. Um, the previous year he had planned to to spend, um, he had in 8788 he had planned yes. to spend 53.2 billion yes. um, shillings. Yes. But he only ended up spending 29.2 billion. So the budget was almost half of the previous year's budget. Amazing. I mean, um, uh, even um, in subsequent budgets, it yes. never happened. It, it, can kind of <laughs> it cannot have such a dramatic fall. Yes. And um, the even interesting thing about this was that um, the reduction in the budget came out of a supplementary budget. Mm -hmm. Now, what we know, or what we, our experience of supplementary budgets now, in the last 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. is that supplementary budgets only increase the budget. This one reduced the budget. How? How was that even possible? No, I mean, he, he, he just... He said um, they, re they, they reduced planned expenditure to cater for some unplanned expenditure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I would have loved to be there and asked him, actually, because <laughs> his speech is a bit uh, very thin on uh, the explanation. Uh, Dr. Crispus Junger is still alive. You will probably need uh, well, to... Well, uh, maybe one day we should look for him. He's now <laughs> he's ambassador to China or yes. something. But uh, that, that was unusual, that mm -hmm. the supplementary budget reduces rather than increases yeah. the budget. Uh, but I think there's a lot of shifting around and because they weren't also collecting revenue, yet the needs of the army in the north were very urgent. Yes. So I imagine a lot of stuff got cut mm -hmm. out and uh, we were not collecting enough revenue. So we sh cut from the ministries, passed it to the, to the north mm -hmm. to fight the war while reducing the budget at the same time. <sighs> tight. Things were tight those days. Wow. Things Interesting. Were really tight. Uh, so there was also a quota system that limited the country's exports. I don't understand. What, <laughs> what was that? So, so uh, I think this was a reference to um, to coffee. Uh -huh. So in those days, there was something called the International Coffee Organization, if I'm not wrong. Right. And this organization would uh, would would have members. Member states were coffee producers, and mm -hmm. it would it would allocate how much you're supposed to produce to maintain ah. the price at a certain level. It was an attempt by the coffee growing uh, countries yeah. to maintain coffee prices at a certain level that uh, gives them some money yeah sure, sure. so in that system <laughs> each company each 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 company each country was given a quota to export given its production so of course the biggest exporters are brazil but you can't export everything you just we give you some uganda mm -hmm. like that, like that. Mm -hmm. so we needed the money urgently because interestingly at the time uh, something we don't do now we used to we used to we used to tax coffee exports in fact, coffee export tax revenues accounted for 80% of the budget of, of the revenues we collected. Wow. Coffee alone. So it was in our interest that we export as much coffee as we can. So if we don't, our budget would suffer. And probably that, uh, not probably, that's why also we had to cut back on our budget. The revenues from coffee were just didn't mm -hmm. come in. Our quota was small that year. Thank you, Lynn. We continue analyzing the different budgets from 1986 till today. Now we take a look at our Daily Pal of Africa series, which is Ngamba Island. Ngamba Island is home to Uganda's chimpanzees. This island is located 23 kilometers southeast of Entebbe in Lake Victoria and is home to over 40 orphaned and rescued chimpanzees. Join with us as we take a look at Ngamba Island. Located 23 kilometers southeast of Entebbe in Lake Victoria is Namba Island. The sail on the waters of Lake Victoria kicks start of the adventure to the island of life. This place gives life and a home to orphaned and rescued chimpanzees. <laughs> Established in 1998, Ngamba Island is a project of Chimpanza Sanctuary and Wildlife Conservation Trust. Having started off with not more than 20 chimpanzas, this chimpanza sanctuary now conserves the biggest number of these mammals in the country. 
<laughs> Once a foot on the island, the guides take you around the place, explaining the history of the chimpanzee sanctuary. Visitors get a chance to get close to chimps and even see keepers feed them. <laughs> While here you can get the feeling of the wild, to avoid the aggressiveness at times, these rather friendly mammoths are kept in cages. Namba Island is a sort of paradise in Lake Victoria for clearly not only the chimpanzees but even the visitors who can take advantage of the breeze looming at the lake, the cool sheds under these trees and also have picnics with a family. Not enough words that can't describe the awesome experience. Know that the sanctuary is open all year around to visitors who pay an entrance fee to view the chimpanzees. Here's a quick look at the scientific classification of a chimpanzee. The kingdom is Animalia, phylum is Chodata, class is Mammalia, order is Primates, suborder Haplohini, Infraorder, Simiforms, Family, Hominidae, Subfamily, Hominia, Tribe, Hominini, Genus, Pan, Species, P, Troglodytes. <laughs> Now, for more Palo of Africa stories, visit our website, which is newvision.co.ug forward slash Palo of Africa. Our newspaper, The Sun Division, is also another home of adventures. Grab your copy every Sunday for Pal of Africa stories. We now take a look at our special report today. The only time you will have the highest number of Ugandans gathered together is on one event, which is June the 3rd. Now only three days away, all is set for the Uganda Matters Day celebrations. Last year, the police reported over 3 million people who turned up at both the Anglican and the Catholic places of worship. An estimated 4 million people will be coming this year. A mixture of activities make the Vist a lifetime one. From business to prayers, New Vision TV now takes you through the events at Namugongo. All is set for the Uganda Matters Day celebration on Monday, June 3rd. Last year, police reported over 3 million people turned up at Namugongo shrines, the Catholic and Anglican, in remembrance of the young men who between 1885 and 1887 were killed for refusing to denounce their faith. At the time, matters were butchered. Namugongo was a forest and a convenient killing field of the Mkajanga, the chief executioner. He took orders from Kabaka Mwanga to eliminate pages who had found a new faith that threatened the authority of the Kabaka and implemented them ruthlessly. Some of the young men who are now venerated as martyrs were burnt, others speared and chopped to death. Mukajanga's office was located at the Anglican shrine. After a busy day chopping, he would go down to the valley to wash his blood-stained weapons. The well he used has been preserved and exists today. In reverence, several of the martyrs Christians are arriving at the shrines, having trekked hundreds of miles from different parts of the country. It has become a routine ritual for them to walk. Not only do they walk in remembrance, but in supplication that they too have strong faith as the martyrs. And also pray that the 19th century martyrs intercede for them to go to lift their burdens. Besides the faith aspect, Matters Day accentuates what Ugandans are in several ways. The strong portrayal and adherence to Christianity is palpable, making Uganda a religious country, explaining thousands braving the enervating journey on foot. The several mushrooming churches across the country are another indicator with huge numbers turning up at namugongo the entrepreneurial element in ugandans is visible several businesses are temporarily set up to tap the opportunity present by the crowd there is a clear understanding of what people want and what should be provided to meet their needs as early as monday this week stalls had been set up with commodities and services on offer 
pubs and eateries are up and running. Music is blaring away into the night. There is someone who every year sets up a merry-go-round and children's play area, which means he is making money. This time, the investors has a competitor, so they are two. The Fed also sheds light on the negatives defining Ugandans. Top on the list is lack of preparedness. Namugongo falls under Kiramoni's Municipality Council, which at the last minutes has been trying to patch up feeder roads running around the shrines, especially the Catholic. This should have been done earlier given that the date is marked on the calendar as unknown. As the main roads are closed for security reasons, some feeder roads which could have provided alternative routes are still unmotorable. Grading at last minute and in rush leaves a bad job, as seen with mounds of soil left in roadways to residences. There have also been desperate attempts to desilt drainage channels which are blocked. It seems local authorities have neglected repairing the Maram feeder roads, which are the major source of silt that they are fighting to clear ahead of matters day in bid to make Namugongo neat and welcoming. As the work goes on, not only proof or poor maintenance is glaring, but also negligence and public insolence are evident. Concrete slabs covering the channels used as pedestrian walkways are missing in some sections. Some are broken as they are being lifted to desilt waterways. Others crumbled under the weight of trucks driving over them over the years. With no one barring them or issuing penalty, truck drivers in the area have acquired the notoriety of driving over the channels with impunity leaving them damaged. In 2014, when the roads were constructed, draining channels and pavements were built ahead of Pope Francis Vist in 2015, Pilgrims as well as residents were assured of convenient and safe walkways. Today, the gaping sections that could be fatal. Authorities didn't check these ahead of time and the last minute rush to fix them is not effective. So, many will stay open. Short metallic stamps meant to demarcate road's shoulders have long disappeared. It is possible that they were sold off for scrap and ended up in a furnace at one of the several steel mills in the country. Accepting and using stolen items without fear is a common Ugandan habit. Had it not been so, there would be no market for road furniture at an alarming rate. Border border riders have also taken over the walkways, turning them into their lanes, aging out pedestrians, contributing to the damage. This is often done to beat traffic. With no one reprimanding them, they ride bullishly, sending pedestrians scampering off the pavements. In 2014, as part of the plan to beautify Namugongo, palm trees were planted in the road reserves. They were left to grow wild with no one tendering them. Typical of Ugandans, those who planted them didn't return to see how the trees were growing. Today, some are grown, others are stunted. Due to poor maintenance, Silting and running water are eroding ages of some sections of the main roads constructed five years ago. As they wear out, it seems no one is reflecting on the saying, a stitch in time saves nine. The positive Namugongo shows changing times. Thousands walk long distances, safe and enjoy freedom to worship. The negative is the culture of negligence, poor maintenance, misuse and sprucing up only when visitors are coming or head of a big festival. For more on this special report, visit our website, which is newvision.ca.eg forward slash video. Remember, you can find us on social media. Facebook is the New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Y. Instagram is at New Vision Y. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Ruth the Voice. Now, till next week, we end with a fact file. <laughs>